Okay, you guys, in this video, we're gonna look at topic two of the 6.2 notes. Um, in topic two, we're gonna kind of do an intro into what gene regulation is, which is something we're gonna talk about in the remainder of these notes, um, and kind of is the more complicated part of this unit. So gene regulation uh, refers to uh, basically cells controlling um, which genes are being expressed and how much certain genes are being expressed inside the cell. And so gene expression, just to remind you guys, is when you take a gene and you actually use that gene to, to produce what it codes for. And so genes code for some sort of functional RNA or protein product. Um, and so most genes, a lot of times when we're talking about genes, we're talking about proteins that they code for. Um, sometimes though there are genes that code for certain pieces of of, of RNA that have some sort of important function. Um, but that's the expression of a gene, when you actually use the gene to build the RNA or the protein that it codes for. And so gene regulation, though, is the ability of cells to control how much a gene is being expressed um, and when it's being expressed. So some in a cell, uh, not all of the genes in your DNA are being expressed all the time in every cell. That's not what's happening. That would be a huge waste of, 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 of energy and resources because depending on the cell and depending on what it needs to do, there are certain genes that it needs at any given moment and a lot of genes that it doesn't need at any given moment. And so genes are constantly being um, turned on and expressed and some genes are being turned off and not expressed and some genes are being turned on and expressed a lot and some are being turned on and expressed a little bit. And so it depends on the cell and um, uh, and sometimes also environmental factors that determine when, what genes a cell is using when it, and when it's using those genes and how much it's using those genes. And so that whole process of a cell controlling all that is called gene regulation. Super, super important and super cool that cells are able to do this um, with all the DNA that they have, knowing which pieces of the DNA they need to use and then um, being able to control that. And so uh, basically in this, this video, uh, I just want to go over on this topic just some quick vocab terms that we're going to be using a lot. And these vocab terms are uh, really important because um, it'll help, well, hopefully we're going to use these terms a lot, so that's why it's important. But also these terms are kind of easy to confuse. Um, and so I just want to uh, point out what each of them mean. And so I have this little picture here that I drew a long time ago. It's not the best picture, but it kind of gives you an overview of these different terms I want you guys to get familiar with that have to do with gene regulation. So the purpose of, I mean, for the purpose of this class for AP Bio, a lot of times when we talk about gene regulation, we're talking about genes being controlled on the level of transcription, meaning that for, for a, a lot of situations, what determines the thing that determines whether or not a gene is being expressed is whether or not it's being transcribed. So transcription is the process of actually taking that 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 gene and making mRNA from that gene um, to transcribe it into RNA. And if you can just control that, if you can control um, some genes, allowing some genes to do transcription and not allowing other genes to do transcription, that's where you can have a lot of control over what genes are being expressed. Because if you're not transcribing a gene and making the RNA, then, um, then you're never going to make the protein for that gene, for example. Um, or if you have a, a gene where there, there is a lot of transcription taking place, well, then you're probably expressing that gene a lot and making a lot of that protein. And so here are some terms, and let's see if we can make sense of these terms. So first of all, gene. A gene just codes for, it has the instructions to build something, right? And so a lot of times that's going to first, uh, uh, in transcription, we're going to make that into mRNA, right? Um, and then we're going to send that mRNA to a ribosome to then actually create that protein that it codes for. Um, but then there's also things called regulatory sequences. So regulatory sequences are not genes. They're, they don't have the instructions to produce something, but they are important pieces of DNA. These sequences um, are regions in your DNA that proteins can bind to. So there's certain types of proteins called regulatory proteins that have a specific structure and shape that allow them to bind to a specific sequence in your DNA. And so in this example, this green protein here is able to bind to this sequence in your DNA, this regulatory sequence. So regulatory sequences are regions in your DNA that regulatory proteins bind to. Now those regulatory proteins are coded by genes. There's a gene that has the instructions for these regulatory proteins, and we call those regulatory genes. So regulatory genes are just specific types of genes that are producing 
that have the instructions to build these regulatory proteins. And then those regulatory proteins will bind to your DNA. And when those regulatory proteins bind to these regulatory sequences in your DNA, they will cause the expression or the transcription of your genes to either increase or decrease. So there's some regulatory proteins that bind to sequences in your DNA that cause certain genes to start being transcribed more. And there's some regulatory proteins that bind to sequences in your DNA and they cause certain genes to be transcribed less. And um, we'll talk about those two different types in a, in a second. Um, but then the last thing I want to show you on this picture is there's some regulatory genes that don't have the instructions for a protein, but instead have the instructions to produce um, some small um, uh, functional piece of RNA. And so there's these small pieces of RNA that are called um, small regulatory RNA, uh, which are just small pieces of RNA. And there's lots of different examples of this. And these small regulatory RNAs, what they do oftentimes is they can actually bind complementary to certain mRNA sequences. So there's certain RNAs, molecules that are being produced through transcription from certain genes. And they actually, sometimes these small regulatory RNAs can actually go and bind to those mRNAs. And that actually usually, almost always, causes that mRNA to not be translated. So this actually blocks the mRNA from being read um, successfully by a ribosome. So this will stop the mRNA from being translated, um, ultimately causing this mRNA to not lead to a protein being made. Okay, it's going to block a ribosome from reading this mRNA. Uh, and so that also is coded by certain regulatory genes. So sometimes regulatory genes are coding for these regulatory proteins, and sometimes they're coding for these, these small pieces of regulatory RNA that can go mess with your mRNAs and prevent them from being translated. And so uh, in terms of these regulatory proteins, like I was mentioning earlier, there's two types. There's regulatory proteins called repressors, and there's regulatory proteins called activators. And so for repressors, you can kind of guess what these things do. Repressors are regulatory proteins that bind to regulatory sequences, special sequences in your DNA. And when they bind to your DNA, they decrease or stop transcription of certain genes. So they stop genes from being transcribed. And then there's... Um, uh, so we call that negative control. So negative control of a gene is when you have these repressor proteins involved binding to these sequences in your DNA, causing transcription to stop or to start ca causing transcription to, to, to decrease the amount of transcription of those genes. So you're expressing those genes less. But then there's also activator proteins. Activator proteins are a different type of regulatory protein that also bind to sequences in your DNA. They bind to regulatory sequences, certain sequences in your DNA that these activator proteins bind to. And when they bind to those sequences, they cause um, transcription of certain genes to, to start occurring or to start increasing. So they increase the transcription of certain genes by binding to your DNA. And we call that positive control. So positive control of a gene is when you have activator proteins binding to your DNA and then increasing the amount that that gene is being expressed and transcribed. And so and when we start talking about gene regulation more specifically in topic three and four, you guys are going to see a lot of these players involved with these, these regulatory proteins, either repressors and activators, binding to certain sequences, causing certain genes to be transcribed more, transcribed less. And all of this is helping cells um, regulate their, the expression of certain genes and control how much and to what level genes are being used, if, if at all. Um, so that's that's it for this little introduction on gene regulation. So thank you guys. I'll see you guys later.